We are you in this video. Currently, I'm sitting in Port Elizabeth, but we go to Kraga Kama Game Reserve, Game Park. Kraga Kama is actually a small game park. It's about 20 kilometers from where we are now in Summer Strand. It's an owner-operated game park. It looks like there's also a bit of a, a wildlife estate, so people live there, but they've opened it up to the public. And then it's, it's a coastal forest and grassland habitat, which is always epic to, to explore. They've got epic animals. They've got Lichwe, Pontebok, Grijsbok, which are just a few to mention. They do have uh, three of the big five, two of which roam freely, which is your white rhino and buffalo. And then they've got lion in an enclosure and also cheetah. We've just entered the reserve. We're busy looking at some Pontebok, which is pretty cool because we don't get Pontebok uh, in our area and Operating Kruger, we definitely didn't get born to walk up there. Uh, I've seen born to walk before, but not in years. Yeah, it's not a Kruger animal. So, um, yeah, the, the born to box a pretty interesting antelope in this country uh, because it was nearly wiped out. In the 1830s, there are only 22 born to book left in South Africa because it was vastly hunted. It had a successful conservation program and by, by 1992, I believe, there were 2,000 born to book again. So it's just a very interesting uh, uh, animal. And the reason I was excited to see it is because historically, they're known to be in southwest of the Cape. Um, and only later were they moved to other conservation areas. So we never got to see it working in Kruger. The other very interesting thing about them is that we are unsure if any true Bontebok strains exist because it's a subspecies of the blessed buck. They have interbred over the years, so there's uh, a certain group of conservationists that don't believe that there's any true blessed buck or Bontebok strain left. <laughs> I think my favorite part of Kroger Karma is definitely the coastal section of it. So we just stopped here because we've got a mommy and a baby in Yala. Um, and there's fly catchers everywhere. So like, you're just in this little cool spot of, on the forest loop. And there's a southern bobo in the bush here. And I just told Christy, the southern bobo is super cool because they've got 50 calls that are just theirs that we know of that aren't mimic calls. You can be walking through the bush and hear 30 different species of bird, but it's actually just one bird. That's super cool. Baby and y'all is right here in the bushes. Most coastal forests and forests in general kind of just become alive, um, especially when you move from grassland into the forest area. So as soon as we drove in there, it was just, it came along with sounds and smells saw the Nyala there, lots of fly catchers and just bird life in general. So I think my favorite part is definitely the, the forest areas, that little loop we did. Sick. about the predators in this reserve and 
how do you feel about them being in captivated uh the predators so they have lion and cheetah both in enclosures I think it's a smart move because it is a residential estate and not everyone's as extreme as the people that live up in Limpopo, like Modit or Big Fab. Um, it keeps people safe. So I guess it depends on why they're there. If it's there just to attract people, then yeah, it, it's a bit of a, a cuck on. You don't really want to see predators in enclosures. But if there is a bit of a conservation standpoint because of it, then it's cool that they're there. Um, it's cool that people can come and see lions. Um, and yeah, it's definitely smarter. It keeps people safer um, because you are allowed to just kind of move freely. The fact that the buffalo are there is interesting because we know that buffalo can be quite vault and quite dangerous. But um, I think, I think it's epic that's there. You get to see them up close. For kids, that's definitely special. Hopefully, if there's any kids that live there or get to visit it quite often, it makes them want to go to Addo and find them in the wild. I think that would be Yeah, it was also Christy's first time. Yeah, it, it was Christy's first time in a game park. Um, cool though, I actually think it's cool that we're in such a small one because when she does eventually go to Kruger, I think it'll be nuts. Here's your first line. Yeah. Here's a Christie's first line. I the buffalo. I think the buffalo look close to us as the one. Uh, we're at the lion viewing deck. So they have lion and cheetah here, but they're in bomas, they're in enclosures within the reserve. Because I think this is actually an estate for people. There's rhino up in the, that tree line there, which is all gum trees. So <laughs> it's a bit weird because it's not that indigenous, but at least there's three lion here. And it's cool to look at them. Kraga Karma has done a good job opening up to the public. I think it's very cool that they've created an environment where we can just disappear for two hours. Because we were there, what? We were there literally for just yes. under two hours and we got to drive the whole reserve, got to see most of the animals. They do do game drives. Um, I would imagine they're allowed to go on different routes. But uh, I think it, it, was, it was perfect for what it is. Um, obviously, I had to rework the way I thought coming from Kruger. But um, the bird life's insane. I could definitely spend a whole day in there uh, birding or looking for the smaller animals, like actually trying to, so they give you a checklist. And if we went in there to actually try to find everything, I think it would be quite a fun little outing. Um, so yeah, I, I love that they've opened up to the public. It might be a bit pricey for what it is. 120 Rand a person, being able to drive the whole thing in under two hours, might be a bit pricey. For a once-off thing, or if you're an avid birder, I'll definitely pay that price. Um, so yeah, it was, I think definitely a, a fun way to spend the afternoon. Could work on the price thing, but also I know how expensive it is to look after those animals, so maybe it is fair. <laughs> Uh, that was epic. We're done. Uh, we're leaving the game reserve now. So we saw quite a few cool things. It's the little ones that we didn't see, but the little ones and from seeing this are more nocturnal. Stoked we got the buffalo. They're just really fast, so we didn't even try and shoot them for you. We don't have long lenses. Um, oh, we've got an A5 more, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Make it 11. We did see mountain reebok. I would have liked to see the blue diker. And a grace book would have been fucking epic. It was nice. We only had two hours. We did it in less than two hours. So it was just a fun little outing while we were in PE. Um, and it was Chris's first game reserve. The bird life's insane. I'd, I'd love to actually bird this reserve. Um, but also Addo's in the area. La Vila's in the area. So there's a lot of huge reserves with great stature. Um, but if you just have two hours of time, then this was epic. And you can brine there. They actually have a section where you can get out and brine. So that's, that's pretty cool. I think for a day out with the kids or a day out for avid birders, definitely a place you can go to escape. I'd like to do a project there. I want to see how 
alien plant species affect local animals because the conservation is there but there's blue gum trees and all sorts of weird trees growing in that little game park. I think it'll be quite interesting to see how that affects animals. That's great. And uh, one final question that, that I do have to ask you is, uh, <laughs> where will you be in the next video? Hmm.